Good evening, yarnies and dirty hookers out there. How is everybody tonight? I'm doing pretty good. A little achy, but that's normal. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. Let me get my uh, thing situated. Let me double check. Make certain this posted. Hey there, Lumberjacks lady. How are you? Get that posted correctly. So I want to make certain things are running the way they're supposed to run. Hope everybody enjoyed, and I don't even have it here on hand. Bear with me, everybody. Sleepy, it's been cloudy and rainy. I hear ya. It's been, I think, pretty sunny here. Let me double check something. Okay. I hope everybody enjoyed the, and I haven't tucked in the tails yet. Hope everybody enjoyed the vintage coaster that we made last night. And, and Friday. We started on Friday. That we finished last night. Still the top, still the weave in the ends. And uh, I was talking to Clay Miko last night, and we both agree we like it better with the mistake where I didn't do the increase to create the uh, raised little ruffle. As the uh, you find my sample that it, what it's originally supposed to sort of look like. Again, this has not been blocked. But that's what the original... Let me see if I can find what the front and the back is. That's what the original is. Which I guess you could starch it and lift up, but it's a little more dramatic with the... It's more of a ruffle. So, there will be more vintage patterns. Well... It's not really less work. It's just, just a few extra less, like a few less stitches, maybe about nine or ten less stitches, I think. Remember how, if I remember correctly? I just didn't do the increases. So. Oh, in terms of starching, yeah. But we, um, as the uh, screen says, we're working on our blankets for Project Linus. And I am doing the Endlessly Elegant blanket. And you can see the picture there, the example. This is what I'm working on. I'm now to the point of my last round of this repeat. So I have one more round, and then I can start... The way this, this pattern works, you've got this repeat. I have one more round to do. And then you can start it again. You can finish it on any row that has these fans. So once I finish this round, I'm going to switch back to the darker color and do a couple rounds with the fans. And if I have enough of the light, do one more row of the fans and it will be done. So we're... Coming down to the end of this, this is all I have of the light yarn, so we'll see if we have enough. I'm not 100% certain if we will or not. So what is everybody working on? I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Give me a second. Whew, excuse me. Let me double check this here. Let me zoom in a little so we all can see what I'm, how I'm doing this. This round is simple. I don't have to really 
do any counting, it's all back, back post doubles. Same shawl, I'm so close it hurts. I'm doing it down to the last two colors of the cake when I'm to the point of going crazy. You can do it, keep it up, home stretch. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to make that shawl. Very pretty looking. And I do have some yarn that would work. I've got some of that facet yarn. Lumberjacks have been encouraging me to I'm trying trying my best. Yeah. You can do it. I need to come up with a few more pattern. I have one pattern for a blanket for Project Linus. I've got a bunch of um, baby yarn. It's mostly white, but it's got, well, there's different, different colorways. They're all similar colors, but they're all different yarns, meaning I got like one or two cakes of this, one or two cakes of that but they all have similar colors. I don't know if they would be compatible with each other. I don't think some of them will, because I think one is very thin. It might be a, a weight of two, and the other ones are like a four, so that's not going to work. But um, I need a pattern that I can use with those, even if I have to pair it up with a solid white, which... I might have some solid white that might work with it. And that's, again, also for Project Linus. But I'll start that at, once this is done. And I still have the man cave throw pattern even though it's not going to be for a man but the uh the camouflage one still have that going i have to measure it to see how long it is to determine if i have to keep going or finish it soon then i will come up with like i said a different pattern for It's mostly white, but pastel speckled baby yarns. But I like the row I'm working on. It takes a little time for me to form the, these stitches because they're back post doubles. And it's not something I'm really used to doing, and it I have to do it a certain way. Well, I have to do it a certain way for it to actually work. But I do like this this ridge that it forms. It's like a frame. But like I said, at least I don't have to worry about any counting on this round. Off stream, I did the round previous, which was all pretty much regular doubles. There were some front posts. And that one was pretty straightforward as well. Again, if anybody's interested in this pattern, it is the Endlessly Elegant Blanket Pattern on Ravelry. The free pattern, it is a chart only. It is gorgeous.
And again, it's one of those patterns that it's got a large repeat and you can keep doing it to whatever size you want. Like some shawls are like that where you've got a base number of repeat rows and you just make them as often as you want for the size that you need. I like patterns that are like that. Me. Summer night shawls like that. It's a four row repeat. Gotcha. Same thing with the, um, I have a, my little sample that I was hoping to make it really usable. Same thing for the, um, fluffy meringue shawl. Let me zoom this one out. This is also a four row repeat. So that's the repeat. Those are the four rows and you just make them as big as you want. But again, I ran out of yarn for this. But I've made three others in that same colorway. <laughs> Plus again, the two other in the in a different colorway, same pattern. I like those type of patterns because it's, for the most part, you don't really have to remember too much. Once, with me, once I do it a, a couple of the repeats a couple times, it's like, okay, oh, I got it in my head. I know how to do this. I wish I can get some more of this yarn that I'm working with because I really like it. But sadly, it's a discontinued yarn. I got it about about roughly 20 years ago. So, and I don't remember the name of it. I've also been uh, looking into planning September's streams. We're doing a woodland themed. It's not that's not going to be strictly a granny month. It isn't all going to be granny squares. There are going to be some granny squares, but all of the ones I will show how to do and teach on stream will be woodland themed. I think I'm going to have to come up with a few more uh, projects for it or stitch patterns. But I figure we're getting into the fall here in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's almost um, those cozy vibes that usually happen in the fall and into the winter. 
we will do a little Portland inspired motifs. I gotta come up with some critters because I've got a bunch of um, plant or that type of idea. I just gotta come up with some critter patterns. I'll have to figure something out. Yeah, and I'm still on planning for that. Can't wait to see. Yep. There's going to be some adorable, really, really adorable ones. There's like, I selected a bunch of them a while ago, but I uh, reviewed them again last night. And uh, I had forgot some of the ones I selected and some that are super cute that I can't wait to do. And again, those the, the patterns that I'm going to be showing are not my patterns. They're ones I found online. And again, I will credit the sources that I get them from. So technically, they're they're not my my patterns. But yeah, I'm just hoping I can win at yarn chicken with this yarn. If I can't win Yarn Chicken, then I'm going to have to do this last row that I'm working on now in the darker shade, which I really don't want to. And I'm not roughly about halfway my, through my first side, and that's all I got, so... <sighs> we'll see. And I can't fudge anything with this round to save some yarn. And I'm a I'm a tight hooker to begin with. And I'm trying to make it a little bit snug to uh, save all that I can, but I've got some doubts. Hey there, Dan. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm working on the well, last round of the repeat of this blanket. I'll still do a few more rounds on this, but this is the what I call the uh, quote-unquote frame part of the pattern. I don't want to end up playing yarn chicken, but we might have that issue when we get to it. We get to the end.
but I'm getting there. Again, I love this simple pattern. You just do back post doubles. So if you ever want to add a little bit of texture and to frame something, just do a line of back post doubles. Forms that interesting ridge. The stitch I don't do that often. And again, if there's anybody has any questions about anything in general, any uh, crochet or whatever, or whatever I do on stream, doesn't have to per pertain to this project itself. You can always ask that, and I will be uh, glad to try to answer your question or to demonstrate something. I don't mind stopping what I'm doing to do that. Getting near the end of the corner of my first side. Let me double check something. The size of that yarn ball is scaring me. <laughs> Just constantly looking at the corner of my eye. So what is everyone else working on? I always get nervous when it comes to chicken, yeah. Like I said last night, I wouldn't be as nervous if I had access to more of this yarn in the same dialogue. What's going to make me really mad is if I get all the way to the fourth side and I lose yarn chicken by like two, three stitches. 
if that's the case, I'm going to say the heck with it. I'm just going to keep going. And those few stitches will have to be in the darker shade. Only a few stitches, I'm okay with that. I don't want it to be like super noticeable. All right, I got. Well, do the corner. The corner is easy. So that's one side. Got three more, and that's all I got. It's going to be close. I don't think I'm going to have enough to do the very last rounds in this light. That was my plan. If I was smart, I would have started the center of the blanket in this light color. And I would have had enough for the entire center or good proportion of the center to be in the light. But I think it actually looks better to have darker, the darker dye lot in the center and the, and the outer part to be lighter. Keep over keep looking over at that hole over there and it's I scared. <laughs> Side I get, yep, side I game is strong. 
Got to keep an eye on it. Again, it wouldn't be too bad if it was, wasn't as much of a noticeable difference between the die lots. The only other issue with doing this round, it's the same thing, and when you get to get to be the size that this is, it's is the side ever going to get done. Because the rows with the fans go somewhat quickly because there's a lot of chain spaces in it, and is your feelings with the shawl. Yeah, the rows here with uh, the fans, at least there's chain spaces and they're spread out and, but this is literally every single stitch gets the same stitch. And I'm not even halfway done this side. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose yarn chicken. Well, I'm gonna keep soldiering on. When I get to the next corner, I'm gonna put this to the side, and I'm gonna switch over to the the man cave camouflage blanket and work on that and I know I will not lose yarn chicken on that because I got plenty of that. Like I said, if I have to frog out this round, I will. That's the beauty with crochet. You can easily frog it out. And it's not going to destroy the whole pattern. It's not like knitting where it could affect rows below. What I always say is <coughs> crochet is not permanent. You can always frog it out and redo it. It's just yarn.
But yeah, my attempt at trying to uh, sable in some of the yarn to get to the end by making these popcorns one stitch smaller might not have done anything. And I didn't want to make the popcorns even smaller because then that would look really weird. I don't think popcorns look good with only three double crochets in them. Minimum that I would do is the four like I did here for this. These repeats. Get the yarn going the way that it needs to go. I mean, technically, what I could have done, now that would have messed everything up totally. I was going to say for this one round, go down a hook size to help save with yarn, but the tension's going to be all off, and yeah. Trying to figure out where the stitch went. I need something to drink. Even though I'm probably going to end up losing a yarn chicken, it still looks beautiful. Still looks really nice. And the pictures don't do it justice. It's so much nicer in person 
is this yarn has a bit of a a sheen to it that almost sparkles. It's not it's not sparkly. It's not like it's got flecked with glitter or anything. It's the uh, the one strand that it's spun with has the sheen to it. I am getting near the corner. Oh, mm. now there are almost two feet left before we do get the corner. Couldn't even see what I was working on. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me know if I sometimes creep out of frame. It's not intentional. I get so involved what I'm working on, I'm not paying attention to my uh, preview of what's on the camera. Okay. I am pretty much at the corner here.
let's stitch like I usually do. Yeah. Dang it. Definitely going to end up losing yarn chicken on this round. I actually might do. I'm going to finish this side and when I get to this corner I'll be halfway done done the round so this is the end of the second side off stream I will do a little measurement to see I can't talk and stitch at the same time to see how many inches each of these stitches take up. And then I'll do the math and I'll measure out, unravel that ball and measure out how much I have left and do the math to see if I'm gonna have enough. And if it's only short by a few stitches, then keep going. So I'm just going to do my corner. Okay, we're going to do the corner. We did the corner, and I'm going to put the stitch marker in there. Oh, that stitch marker is breaking. Luckily, I've got plenty of others. Let's do an orange one. They work, but over time they will break. But that's the nature of stitch markers. Okay. But we've got that side and then this side. So we got two sides done. And all we have left is that of the of the light blue. Yeah, that's what I'll do off stream. I'll frog out a few stitches, mark the beginning and end, measure to see how much what that length is per stitch and then measure what I have left over. And hopefully, we'll see what we come up with. But I don't have high hopes on that. Um, we're gonna have an ad here in about five minutes. Let me do this before we go to ad. I'm gonna move some behind the scenes things. We're gonna move that away. We're gonna move that away. We're gonna put that up. And we're gonna put that up. So we'll be ready for switching over to our other project. I gotta find my hook. It uses a different hook. Double check this right here. Okay. Gotta remember where I'm at on this. Okay, I'm on the last row of the camo for this repeat. Get to the end of this row, I will measure the length and determine if we're going to need it any longer.
Uh, let's split the yarn there. Okay. Got to be a little mindful of that. Why is that not forming the stitch? So I don't have enough yarn to do another four row repeat. So the one your the one you're on is the last. The dread and sluggish has gone away now. But there's not there's a yep, you have an end in sight. <laughs> you can see the light at the end of that tunnel. Well that's good that uh you're pretty much at the end. We're gonna have an ad popping up momentarily within a few seconds so i will be back after the ad is done
Welcome back, everybody. I measured this, and I think I'm going to do at least one more repeat of my, my rows. Get this new second color started. Do It was about 50 inches wide, and we're about, I think we're at, what did I measure the width? I mean the length? It was about 45, 50, so it's almost square, but I want it to be longer. So I'm going to do at least one more repeat, if not another repeat after that. I got plenty of yarn for it, so no yarn chicken with this. Some reason I can't make the stitch.
whoops. Two. Three. Four. Okay. Sometimes I lose count when I'm doing this because I get in a rhythm. Make certain I'm doing the right amount of stitches that are needed. Now I can switch back to my camo. I do have another cake of camo, so I'm not going to run out. One more cake of camo, so be, we'll be good with this. Out of the way, so I don't think I'm going to be needing that for a while. Are you carrying the brown up along the edge? No, I'm I'm ending. So at each the end of each color I am finishing off, so I'll have to go back and weave in. Which is okay, because I don't mind weaving an end. Actually, I'm one of the weird ones. I like weaving an end. <laughs> like the temperature blanket that I've got going that's on hiatus at the moment. There's lots of ends to be we weaved in. I think all the way back to... Well, I haven't worked on it since since I'm in June, and I've got ends, I think, all the way back to, like, the end of April. It's still to be, we be weaved in. But, like I said, that's on hiatus. 
a little too warm to work on it. I need something smaller and lighter weight. which I need to be tracking the temperatures. I need to go back and find all the temperatures for the uh, weeks that I haven't worked on it and for them. For those of you who are new, we started back on the beginning of the year with a year-long temperature blanket project. Uh, record the uh, high temperature of the day and there's a corresponding color chart that I have for those temperatures and that will tell me what color I use for the stripe. Each one stripe is one day. I'm doing the uh, moss or linen stitch for that. But we might pick that back up in September when it starts to cool off a little. That's normally what we do on Sundays is temperature blanket. on When I get to the end of this, when this project is the length that I need it, I got to actually look at the um, pattern for the edge and just, I haven't even read what the pattern it what the edge pattern is and decide if I'm going to do that or make my own Probably a row of, of double crochets, yeah. Which makes sense, because this is a very simple pattern. It's nothing elaborate.
And again, I'm modifying and I'm adding the color, the stripe, and then for each row, the turning jam only chaining one and then doing the double to make a little bit of a cleaner edge. Hey there, Lot Lizard, Fairy Dust. <laughs> How are you? I don't know if you got my uh, message on Discord. Did you uh, get the, the grass mode today? I know you said you couldn't do it yesterday because of uh, the rain. Real quick. Didn't motivation didn't come back. Ah, uh, well, it'll be there. Was working on the uh, blue blanket earlier here in the stream, and I think I've, uh, I'm going to end up losing yarn chicken. Halfway done the last round of that repeat, and there's not a lot left. Frog, yeah, I will probably have to frog it. Like I said, I'm going to end up doing a little sample and marking the beginning and end of it and then frogging that little sample out and measuring it and doing the math to see roughly how many inches or whatever each stitch would take up and then measure the remaining yarn to see if I would have enough or if yarn chicken's going to be super close but I'll do all that off stream When I get to the end of this row, I am going to ask everyone's opinion on some yarn that I have about possible patterns that I could use for it to three, four, five, kind of stumped it's that baby yarn that I was mentioning earlier in the stream. I don't really have enough of one. Or enough of a specific colorway or specific yarn. But they all kind of somewhat coordinate. 
but yeah, we get done this row. No, I want to make um blankets for Project Linus, even if it's a small baby blanket. Um, my chapter requirement is at least thirty by thirty, so it could be a small. I could do hats and, like, maybe donate them to, like, the uh, maternity ward at the hospital. But, um, since I'm doing the, uh, Project Linus stuff, hats is easy. I've got, um, I can whip out a hat in about an hour or so or less. I've got plastic um, knitting looms, like hat round knitting looms. So those those work up pretty fast. Made many a hat in my day. They're actually quicker than my crocheted hats. So you don't got to count. You just got to count rows. You don't got to count stitches. Plus, I've got those two knitting machines, which I need to use again. I think the last time I used it, I demonstrated briefly online how to online on stream how they work. Yeah. And I do have some uh, pattern books for baby booties and baby hats. And actually, there might be some baby blanket patterns. That's really what I... That's something I don't do. I've got a whole bunch of books, but I don't really use them. I need to start going through them and... See what I got. Two, three. Oh, wasn't even on camera. Gotta let me know if I, I drift off. <laughs> I kind of drift to the left. I'm like, need a front end alignment. Could do a pair of booties about 45 minutes. Can crank them out like crazy. Nice. I've never, again, never made booty. I've made socks. Well, I'm in the process of making socks. Okay, let me get this baby yarn real quick. Right over here. A big old bag full of it. Not that, because that's got the camo in it. Okay. So, let's see what I have. This yarn is the same as the blue blanket that I'm making. I thought I had another... I've got four cakes of that. That's not going to work with the blue blanket because the pink, there's a little bit of pink in it. It's, yeah. So this itself could probably be a small blanket or two. I don't have anything to mix with that. But these other ones I might have to combine together. There's this and this. I think those are the same... These are the same. This is really vintage yarn, and this might not even be worth using for Project Linus. Let me just show you this. Okay. It's a baby. It's acrylic. This was sold at Kmart. One skein was $1.09. $1.09. dollar nine. I don't know what year this is from, but you can tell by the label. <laughs> this is some vintage stuff. <laughs> so, I, it's a little on the scratchy side. I don't know about using it to donate. 
So I've got that much of that. Yeah, that's some old school. I think this was gift was gifted to me by somebody at some point. That is, I don't know about. I don't think I want anything that vintage. Let's see. There's this and this. I think, yeah, that little bit there. Word on the street is if you wash with conditioner. Yes. Yes, I've heard of that. This, this isn't that, this isn't as old. This is probably from the early 2000s. I've only got this much in that colorway. And it's showing, a, oh, it showed up really pink there for a second. This is a little bit of a thicker yarn. I would probably consider this a thick size four, a thin size five. So I've only got that little bit of that. There's this, which that's doubled up. That might be, I think it might be the same as this. Yeah, that's the same as that. Yeah, okay. Then, that's cotton. I only have that one, one cake of that. That's, that is definitely cotton. Let me get this other stuff out. Some of this stuff I could probably use together or with a, a white, but a lot of it I probably can't. So that's the cotton. I've got one little cake of this, which is similar type yarn as this, but it's a slightly different colorway. So those could be compatible. There's this, which is similar to this, but different colorway. That's all I have of that. I've got three of these. And these are Red Heart Buttercup, which I'm not familiar with. It's a, it's a bulky five. I think it's a polyester. It feels like a polyester. Yeah, polyester and nylon. So it, it's it's definitely like a fleecy type yarn. So I don't know if there's gonna that might work up to a small baby blanket because it's thick and chunky or chunky er. And then I know we all can't see everything. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is the really old vintage stuff there. That's similar to it, but a different colorway. There's that. And that's similar type yarn. I've got three of these, which I don't need to have all of those on camera, but three of those. And then this stuff is really, really, really thin. This is probably our two. This is really thin. I got a lot of that. And this, which is a slightly different colorway to this. So those can't be used with anything else because it's the weight of the yarn. So that's my dilemma is what to make with this stuff. I can't mix the cotton because it's cotton. Yeah, I could do corner to corner. I've got other newer, like I got back in the winter, four big cakes of red heart, what is it called? Fleece? Got four of those. I can do corner to corner with that. Um, I just don't want to mix too much of this together because the textures are totally different and the thicknesses are. So this is a much thicker yarn than all of this. Hmm. And they got to be small because I don't have a lot of everything. What I'll end up doing, this is what I'll end up doing. The fluffy, I've used double or half double and just made a square. You can't see stitches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, with this type of stuff, I'm not going to worry about the stitch stitches. They're not, you know, yeah, it's going to be very basic. Because it's you're highlighting the yarn and not the stitch pattern. What I will end up doing is probably some of them tonight or tomorrow. I will take a picture of all of these, all of the yarn that I have, all of this baby yarn, and I will put it on the Discord and ask for suggestions. That's what I'll probably do. Yeah, because sadly I don't really have places to donate things as healthcare facilities and other places that used to take handmade things stopped years before 2020 or taping, taking them and selling them in gift shops or as raffle prizes and not actually giving them to people receiving services because of potential infection risk. Wow. Places that serve low-income people sadly won't take handmade things either as people who are giving them, giving the items, sell them. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's horrible. Yeah, um... This, I'm not directly donating this to a hospital or a healthcare facility. I'm directly donating this to Project Linus, and then they distribute it wherever they need to. But, yeah, that's... That sucks that they don't take them, or people end up... Um, sell them, or... Or not, they're not giving... They're not putting the hands of people that need them. Hmm. That needs to change. But I think that's what we'll do. Is I'll end up taking a picture of all of this. Putting on the Discord and asking some suggestions. Because I could mix some white with this. Because this is... Well, it's two thicknesses, but it's this here. This is a basic worsted weight acrylic yarn. So I can add some white to that. That's not a problem. This is kind of fluffy, so I don't think I have any. I might have some white. That's this thickness. Yeah, that's what I'll probably end up doing. It's just... Take a picture. Alrighty. But definitely this thin stuff. This this stuff is real thin. I'm not going to mix that with anything else. And that alone, this alone could probably do a blanket, probably two blankets. Because it's so thin. Okay, let me... Clean this up. Got this cool tote. Um, Projo Mojo gave it to me. I think she got it at Hobby Lobby. She got a bunch of them, gave one to me, one to Grammy. I think she had one for herself. It says, this is how we roll. I thought it was pretty cute. So it's a good place to put my... Uh, Baby yarn for my projects. Alrighty. Um, I think we're going to call it an early night. I'm kind of getting a little achy and a little tired. And I don't want to work more on any of those blankets because I'm also getting warm. Uh, we're going to go find somebody to raid. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, let me just browse the makers and crafters real quick. See if there's anybody doing anything that sparks my interest. That. I'll come back to that one. That one's a possibility.
All right. I think I found somebody to stream. Let me go back to find where their the thing is. I don't know what they're making, but it's really fine and gorgeous. So, um, yeah, we're going to go raid somebody. I think they're crocheting something in the round. Um, stick around for the raid. Uh, thanks, everybody, for... Um, Joining me tonight for working on my uh, Project Linus blankets. I will be on, usually I'm on Thursday, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. I might stream tomorrow, possibly. We'll see. Um, yeah, everybody go over there and give them some love. And I will talk to you all later, hopefully tomorrow. And as I always say, happy crafting.